YouTube, what's going on? Your boy Hell is here. Um, let's take a minute to talk about uh, buying and selling and, and trading some of your gear. Uh, I'm talking more specifically about doing it online than, than in person. Uh, and even more specifically about doing it with some of these uh, buy-sell trade groups that you, you see on Facebook and they're just bringing up all over the place. Um, personally, I, I just keep getting added to them over and over. I'm in 13 right now. I just looked up on my on my Facebook account. I have 13 buy-sell trade groups. I don't have that much gear that I want to get rid of, but I keep getting added to these groups. Uh, so I thought I'd take a minute to just sit back and I guess maybe talk with you guys about the way I feel about these groups uh, and with respect to the actual trading of your gear and selling your gear. So I thought I'd unleash upon the YouTube world my 10 commandments for paintball buy-sell trade on the internet. Commandment number one, know the value of the gear that you have. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people with upped guns that are selling for absolutely nothing. They're selling guns for 150 200 bucks that you can get three, four, five hundred dollars for. It's silly. It's, you know, it's good for whoever's buying it, but like, and I get maybe some people just want to offload their gear and just sell it and they just want to get a couple dollars for it, but at least know the value of the gear that you have. Um... And this way, at least don't look silly when you're doing this. Also, don't sell gear that's like Walmart off the wall, like crap stuff. Like, I promise you, nobody wants that. That's better reserved for Craigslist. Commandment number two, lowballing. I have a gun. I want to sell it for a price. I say that I want to sell my gun for $800, and you come over to me and you say, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 400 cash right now. No. Please don't lowball me. I understand that you're trying to get yourself a good deal, but you're just making me angry, and I'm really not going to sell anything to you if you do that. Uh, so just lowballing is just very inconsiderate, and I understand that maybe you're trying to maybe get a little jumping point for you know for some negotiation, and that's cool. But like, and I have a little respect for the person you're you're negotiating with, and just don't throw like some stupid number at them and just be obnoxious. Commandment number three: to ship first or not. I hear this all the time, you know, blah blah blah. I'll say this, this, this. You ship first. Why would I ship you my stuff first? What logic is that? I understand that maybe you're you're saying, oh, well, you know, I'll send you this money, and you could just not send me the gear. You can get your money back. If I ship you my $1,300 gun, and, oops, you just decide you don't want to pay for it, I'm out of $1,300 gun. You send me money, you can get your money back if I don't ship. Not, not me. I'm going to ship. <laughs> but if you sell... If you're selling something, you inherit the risk, the majority of it, by selling something. If I'm going to ship to you, I should not have to sell you. I should not have to ship my item to you before you give me money. If you go to the food store, you don't, you know, walk out the store with the food and then come back and give people money. No, you give them money, you can take the food with you. Um, that's the logic. That's how you buy something. So if you want to inherit that risk, inherit that risk. But I promise you, there's no reason for a, sh uh, a shipper to ship an item first. That would be like if I went on a and gear and I was like, hey, I'll tell you what. You ship me that ego, and when I see that it's shipped, I'll give you the money. That's, that's retarded. Like, you're not going to do that. And it just makes me really angry when I see people say that. And I, I try to keep my mouth shut. I don't, I, don't, I don't like starting problems with people. But that really aggravates me, so let's not do that. Commandment number four. Pay safely. I get the idea. Um... When you give something on, on PayPal, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't get, cost any PayPal fees, anything like that. It also doesn't give you PayPal insurance. So if you have a problem, if someone doesn't ship you their stuff, you can get your money back, but not usually if you gift it. That's a long, long process. All right? If I walk up to a person on the street, I'm not going to just randomly hand them a gift. I don't know you. Why should I just hand you a gift? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe it'll cost the seller a couple dollars. Maybe it'll cost the buyer a couple dollars, but put insurance on what you're buying and use the fees the way that PayPal sets them up. They're there for a reason. Now don't get me wrong, I've shipped stuff out gifted, but I've had enough confidence in that seller that I felt that it was okay. I might not have known them, they might not have been my best friend for 20 years, but I had enough confidence in them to go ahead and send that money gifted and I still got, I got my product, I got exactly what I wanted, it was in the condition they promised it would be in and that's fantastic, that's the way these groups are supposed to work. But that doesn't always work that way. Alright, so use the PayPal the way it's supposed to be if you don't know these people. 
you know, if John doesn't know Mike, there's no reason for Mike to just randomly trust John and vice versa. So use it the way it's supposed to be used. Commandment number four, multiple rooms and what I call spin-off rooms. Chris gets kicked out of, you know, this buy-sell trade room. There's nothing stopping him from turning around and just saying, you know what, forget this, I'm going to make my own buy-sell trade room. And that's fantastic. I call that frontman syndrome where you're like, you know what, you're going to kick me out, I'm going to start my own band. It's the same concept. It's mad obnoxious, and that's pretty much how I end up in 13 buy-sell trade rooms because everybody has to have their own room and everybody has to do their own thing and everybody blah, 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 blah. It's, it's ridiculous and it gets very out of hand very quickly. Um, and the problem with that really is that now there's more people that you're not, if you're in one or two or three rooms, you can be in contact with all these people, but now you're adding more people and more people and more people to this mix. And you're going to start knowing less and less people and you're going to end up possibly having a problem because you don't know these people. They have no reason to trust you. Uh, so you might want to be a little wary about being in, like me, 13 buy sell trade rooms, of which I use one. So, I mean, there's no real reason for me to be in any of them. It's just kind of fun to see what people post, you know. Number six. BST problems. Buy sell trade problems are just that. They're your problems. Okay? We do appreciate, and I know I appreciate, a heads up saying, you know, this person did this, this person did this, um, they didn't ship the way they were supposed to, the gear was damaged, and all that. We appreciate that. We, I, I mean that. We really do appreciate that. But the 45 minute long conversations that blow my notifications up are not appreciated. Handle it in private. Call, text, fax, sell. I don't care. Handle it in personal messages. Whatever you have to do. But I, when I come home to 65 notifications on my Facebook because Mike's gun has a nick on it that Jay didn't know about, I don't, I don't care. But there's nothing I can do except block notifications, and then that just gets more obnoxious because that's just more stuff that I have to do. So just have a little bit more courtesy than that. Number seven. Personal information. Request a little bit of information. I mean, obviously you need the person's address so you can ship to them. Need uh, maybe the person's cell phone number so you can sell pictures back and forth without having to do it all through the internet. But, um, I mean, people are in a lot of different types of buy-sell trades. There's PB Nation, Tech PB, there's like the McCarter, M. Carter Brown and all that stuff. Get some sort of feedback. Even the people in the room will be able to give you some sort of feedback as to how these people operate. Whether they're consistent or good. There's a couple faces that I absolutely know that I'll never, ever, 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 ever do any type of business with because I've seen the comments that are left for them and I'm not going to have any of that. So there's good feedback, there's bad feedback. Listen to some of it, you know, maybe some of it with a grain of salt, but it's there and it's, it should be at least listened to just a little bit. Number eight. All of this is completely avoided if you deal locally. Local fields, local stores sometimes. These people are local. You know where to find them. You can test the gear before you buy it. You can do whatever you need to do to ensure that you're getting the product that you feel you're supposed to be getting. That might be a way to just completely avoid this entire situation. Also, if you really think about it, if you get all that information about somebody, it'll probably completely just completely take away any type of problem that you might have to deal with between you know calls and texts and all that stuff this way you get the product that you want and it's the way you want it and it's in the quality that you want and that's obviously something that should be looked at number nine please if your stuff is broken dirty dingy grimy ripped fix it before you ship it I don't care what you do. If the foam is coming off a mask, super glue it on. Do some work to show that you did the best you can to ship a product in the best possible shape that it can be shipped in. Uh, there's no reason for me to take a, a mask out of a box, have the, f the foam fallen off, the lens cracked in half, and then what are you going to tell me? Oh, it happened during shipping? A, a paintball lens broke during shipping? It doesn't work like that. Um, you know, guns don't get scratched when they're in the case during shipping. It doesn't work like that. Uh, so please... At least be upfront and fix the gear that you have that you're selling, or at least make sure you sell it in the or uh, you sell it in the shape that you're saying that it's in. You know, if you tell me that you have like a a nine ten pristine ego and you're gonna sip it to me, it's gonna have rips all over it, and the macro line has a hole in it, and there's a slice through the freaking side of the feed neck. You know, it's an inch and a half long, and it's just gonna get. It's, I don't want that. That's not what I want. You know, so just make sure that you have the gear that you say you have 
and that it looks the way you do. And don't sell gear for somebody else. That's just obnoxious. Um, make sure you have the gear that you're selling. Number 10, ship safely. If I'm sending you something, and I mean specifically me, if I'm sending you something that's of value, first off, it's a pro it's property of mine. I'm going to take the best possible care of it that I can. I'm going to ship it to you in the best possible care that I have because I have respect for the stuff that I own. So if I ship you, it doesn't matter, if I ship you if I ship you a paintball mask, say I send you a pair of, of Sly Profits, I'm going to bubble wrap your mask, I'm going to separate the lens, I'm going to make sure that it's pristine, as clean as I can possibly get it, and then I'm going to ship it to you. And it's going to be in the shape that you expect it to be in because that's the shape that I told you it's going to be in. Ship your stuff safely and ship it smartly. Get tracking so people can feel more comfortable. It will give you better credibility. That's the, that's what you really want to have when you're doing these buy-sell trade groups is some sort of credibility, some reason f to have someone say, oh, you know, it's, you know, it's Hella from God Kills. He's going to go ahead and make sure that he gives me the product that he wants. Credibility is everything. It's like, you know, like a credit card. You know, it's they trust you, so they're going to do business with you. Right? But the bottom line is, Buy, sell, trade is a risk. It's a risk that some people take. It's a risk that some people don't want to take. But please, think when you do it. You know, if you don't know this person, there's no reason for you to trust them. There isn't. And as much as you want to, there's no reason for you to trust them. Until you learn a little bit about them and get a little background. And then you'll be like, hey, this guy doesn't seem like he's so bad. Maybe he's safe to do business with. Um... It's also actually a really good way to find good deals. I found a lot of really good deals doing buy, sell, trade. I actually built a couple relationships by using buy, sell, trade. I actually play at the field with a couple people that I bought gear from that I found right online. Um, so it's it's a really good way to go about doing things. Um, and on PB Nation, too, you got a lot of low ballers and little kids running around on all those websites. But, I mean, it's, it is what it is. You know what you're getting yourself into when you do it. But please shop smart, shop safely, and, you know, try and get the best possible gear that you can. All right, I'm sorry if this sounded like a giant rant, but you know how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you just have to get stuff off your chest. If you agree with me, awesome. If you don't, uh, I'm more than welcome to hear why you don't agree with me. Comment below, right? Right, right down here someplace, all right? Comment, and I'll be more than happy to I respond to all. Every, you can ask around. I respond to every comment that I possibly can. So, you know, hit me back. Um, and just like I always say, man, it's, it's that time of night, bro. Hell is out.